Everybody's wrong. Rewrote the song. Thoughts become action. Tell me what's happening. Wish your mind wrapped in or wrapped around. Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create this hyper-realistic sort of paint lettering effect. So let's just get straight into it. Okay, to start we're going to need some type to work with, and I'm going to create an ampersand just so I'm working on one character rather than a full word for example. So I'm just going to create an ampersand, and to do this I'm just going to use my font mono line and add an ampersand, and I'm just going to have to pen tool around the outline of this, well not the outline but so let me get onto a new layer, lock the background layer with that on it and switch to the pen tool. And now I'm just basically going to go around the center of this to create a path. So I'll speed this bit up. Okay, so now that you have your path complete, you can now turn off the background layer, which you do not need anymore. And what I forgot to mention as well is the document size that I'm working on here is 2000 by 2000. So I'm just going to slightly adjust this curve here let me just fix that that looks a bit better right so what i'm going to do is make this nearly the same size as the document and then i'm just going to come up to file save as and i'm just going to save it as ampersand three because i've already done two of these like testing out to see if i knew how to do it properly so i'm just going to hit save and then when this pops up where it says version here, you're going to come down and you're going to select Illustrator 8 so that you can open this in Cinema 4D. So hit that and just hit OK. Hit OK again. And now that's saved. So I'm going to come over to Cinema 4D now. And what I'm first going to do is I'm going to open a studio sort of Lightroom thing. And if you don't have one of these, then you can find free ones online or you can create your own if you're a bit more experienced in Cinema 4D. But I'm just going to load one. So I'm going to come to the content browser on the right hand side and this is actually part of the, oh, let me find, I think it's called Grayscale Gorilla. Yeah, Grayscale Gorilla Light Kit Pro 1. So I'm double click that, come down to Studios, and I'm just gonna select a studio. So I'll select Studio C. I'm just gonna come to the center of it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna open a Finder window, and I'm gonna go to the ampersand that we just created. In, and you'll see that the thumbnail for it should look something like this as well because it's the um, version 8. So from that you're just going to click and drag that in, hit OK, and you'll see that it actually puts it on a different document. Um, obviously if you're a bit more experienced with Cinema 4D you'll probably know how to get it to come straight into that document, but I don't use it too much. So this is what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get it here, select it, and then hit Command C or Control C on PC. Close this document, hit no without saving, and then Command V or Control V if you're on PC. And you'll see it pastes it down here. So I'm just gonna bring it up to the center of this. Right, so now we have this, we need to change this back to the object. So object at the top here, just gonna select that. So now you can see that we have our studio and we have our path. So the studio, I'm just going to right click, come to Cinema 4D Tags, Compositioning, and then this will open here and where it says tag, you'll see that it says scene by camera. So I'm gonna untick that. So that just means that when I do a render or a pre-render, you won't see the background. You'll literally just have the ampersand by itself, which is what I want. So, well, of course, if you wanna keep the, stu the um, sort of studio in there, if you've made your own and you know how to do all that sort of stuff really well, then by all means keep it, but I'm just gonna delete it for this one. So from here, now that we have everything in place, now we can start to actually build it. So we're first gonna come up to the cube at the top here and then you're gonna come over to landscape on the very right hand side. And I'm just gonna drag this up so you can see the full thing. Got there. And this will open up down here in the object tab with the landscape selected. And where it says size 6,000, 1,000, 6,000, we're just gonna change all of these to 1,000. So just one, two, three. Okay, so now it's a fair bit smaller. So now what we're gonna do is where it says plateau level, we're just gonna drop this down, zoom in a little bit. Drop this down until you see it starting to go flat on the top. It's like that. And I'm also just gonna bump the scale up a little. And where it says rough furrows, I'm just gonna drop that down a little bit too. So next we're gonna come up to bend at the top up here, this little purple symbol. And you're gonna come over to spline wrap. Hit that, and then you're just gonna drag this down into the landscape. So make sure it has a little arrow and then a box beneath it on the little, next to the cursor. And that'll put it inside. And the first thing that you want to do with this is where it says axes down here, it says plus X. You want to change this to plus Y. And now what you want to do is see how it says spline here. 
and it's empty. And you're just going to click and drag on your ampersand and drag it down into the spline box like this. So I'll just click and drag and let go there. And now you can see that that effect has now been applied to the um, ampersand that we have. But it's not quite right. And you see it's very, very rough and looks quite messy. So what we'll do to fix that a little bit is come over to this sort of like box in a box. And then where it says subdivision surface, we're just going to click that. And then we're just going to drag the landscape into that. And now you can see it kind of smooths thing out, things out a little bit. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure it's not overlapping each other like it is currently. So to do that, all we're going to do is click on the subdivision surface, come over to the basic tab on the left, where it says X-ray, just tick that so that you can see the path underneath. And then we're just going to click on the ampersand, ampersand layer and make sure you have this tool on the left selected where it has like the points so you can select the points. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on this point here and I'm just going to drag it backwards so that this front one now comes in front of it. And this one, drag it a bit further forward. That means that we now need to drag this one a bit further forward. So you can kind of see how it like interlaces itself. It goes in and out of itself. So you have to use the depth to do that so as you can see it's not flat anymore it's kind of like bent in certain places and that's just so it works properly like this so now that you have that all placed and ready you can come back to the subdivision surface and turn the x-ray off and now we can start um, experimenting with the actual texture itself so what you're going to do is come to the spline wrap and come over to object down here this object tab and you'll see that you've got all these settings here so you'll, these might all be closed like so and if it's like that, then just open the size and you'll have to open the rotation one too. And now we're just going to change things around. So we don't really want the, so as you can see, when we drag this down, it makes everything thinner. So we don't really want it to be too thin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a point in the middle. And to do that, it's you just hold command and then left click, or I'm guessing it's control click on PC. So just command and click. And then I'm just going to drag these two down to the bottom. And I'm just going to change the anchor arm going up like that. So now it gives it a bit more of a smooth finish. And I'm just going to do the same with the other side. And bring that up. Like so. And this side isn't quite as smooth. So let me just see if I can... Maybe if I drag this over that way a little bit, it'll thicken that bit up. And I can just... Not say so. so like playing with these settings here is more a case of trial and error. Just seeing what works and what doesn't work. So again, we're going to come to the spline size and I'm just going to again put another point in the center by holding command and clicking and I'm just going to drag that down because I don't want this center of it to be quite as thick. Uh, sorry, I want the center to be thicker than the side. So let me just drop these down a tad and we'll keep the center nice and thick like so. <clears throat> And I'm, actually, I think this could be a little bit thicker, so I'm just going to bump these up. Let's bump these up to 2,000 each. So yeah, it's kind of just a case of trial and error with these. You just play around with the settings, and as you can see, I've bumped this up to 2,000, and now it looks... It's just got a bit more character to it. The other one was a bit too thin. It didn't really look too great, but now it's got a lot more volume to it. So. Once you've done this size, you can then come down to the rotation. So I'm going to open the rotation here and you'll see that you've got rotation and then you've got spline rotation. Again, this is another one where you can really, really just experiment with it and see what works and what doesn't. But um, I'm just going to go for something very simple. So I'm just going to drag that one to the top and I'm just going to drag this one to the top too. So now you can see it's got that really twisted kind of effect to it. And obviously if you drop these down a little bit, then it un ravels I suppose you'd say yeah it kind of unravels so it's not as twisted and now that we've bumped the sides up you can actually see that it's overlapping itself again so I'm gonna have to adjust some of the points quickly so I'll just quickly do that so now we can move over to making the materials so to create a material we're just gonna double click down here and then double click on your new material and then where it says color and it says texture here you can hit the little drop down menu and come over to layer and then you see this black square. So you're just going to click that and then hit image. And now you can select an image that you want to use as the texture. So you can either download a picture from Google, so like the nebula or something, something colorful, something that looks nice. Or you can make something yourself in Photoshop like this, like these that I've made here. Um, so I'm just going to select one of these. So I'm just going to select this one because it's got a few colors on it. In fact, I'll select this one instead. Hit OK and then no. 
and now you can so that we so we can see what we're actually working with we'll drag this onto the shape so now you can see how the color is sort of being like twisted around the shape with the texture uh, what we can do is we can add a, another image on top of this so let's use the similar picture but different colors hit no and what you can do much like you can do on photoshop is you can use the blend mode here so you can change this to multiply for example and you can see that kind of merges the colors together as it would do in photoshop that's quite a cool little effect that you can do and you can also distort the image as well so but to do that you just hit effect distort and i can see it kind of liquefies it a little bit as if it was in photoshop and use the liquefy tool it sort it kind of gives it that effect and you can play with this here it says noise you can change this and get different effects so i'm just going to see what some of these do so like that peso i think it's i think that's how you pronounce it that was quite that's quite cool so yeah we'll just go with that and i'm just going to do a little pre-render just to see how that's looking so you can see it kind of looks like paint like but it looks quite messy at the top here so if you're not happy with how this looks straight off the bat then you can just go back to the spline wrap come over to object and you can just start adjusting the um rotation here so like that you can see how the colors start to move around the shape so that looks quite nice because now you've got all these colors here mixed together and that looks quite good um however the other side i think needs a bit more color so let's maybe drag these around that looks quite nice quite a wide range of colors there um that looks quite cool drag this up a little bit more maybe or maybe down a bit See, like, like I said, it is really just a matter of trial and error and just experimenting. So let me just twist that. So you can see the end of it twisting more when I adjust this arm. And you can do the same with this side too. This would twist it if you bring it up. So you see how it starts to twist. But I want to keep it fairly simplistic and not over, like, over dramatically twisted. So let me just try and find a good place for this. Okay, so once you're happy with what you've got, I'm just going to do another pre-render again just to get a quick idea of how it looks. So obviously the setting, the render settings are pretty crappy at the minute, so that's why the quality of this looks pretty awful. Um, so once you're happy with how you've got it, I'm just going to actually add a light because I think this studio that I've got at the moment here won't render if I don't have a light. It just is that everything's invisible. So I'm just add a light and just change the shadows to soft. Right, uh, so I think that's pretty much done. Let me just do a quick pre-render. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. So now we're going to come to the render settings and uh, disclaimer. As I said before, I'm not particularly great with Cinema 4D. I'm not like a really experienced user. So if you if you have a better idea for render settings, then by all means use your settings. But I'm just going to go with what I've learned over the short time I've been using Cinema 4D. So resolution 300, width and height 2000. Uh, save. I'm just going to put the output to my desktop and just call it ampersand 3. Save. Uh, change the TIFF PSD to a PNG. Uh, and make sure you have alpha channel selected, and that will basically just take off all the background and it'll leave you with just the ampersand as a PNG with no background on it. I'm just going to tick multi pass. See, I'm not really sure what much of this uh, stuff here does, but these are the settings that I've been told to use. So. I'm going to bring anti-aliasing up to best, options, leave all this stuff, and then I'm going to come down to effect here, ambient occlusion, and global illumination. And from here, now we can render it out by hitting the middle render button here, and this will open this other window, which will start to render your image. So once this is finished rendering, I'll speed this part up, but once this is finished rendering, we'll move on to bringing it into Photoshop and then further manipulating it there to get a bit of a better effect. Okay, so once it's finished rendering, you can now close this box and I'm going to come over to Photoshop and I've already got a document open here which is 2000 by 2000 and now I'm basically just going to drag in the ampersand that we've just rendered out. So just drag that in and as you can see over here, there's no background on it. So if I hold command and click, you'll see it just selects around the outline. So now you've got just the PNG by itself. So let me just drag this to about the center, bring that there. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer so we always have the original. So I'm just going to do Command J or Control J if you're on PC. I'm just going to turn off the background layer. And the first thing I'm going to do is going to come up to Image, Adjustments, and I'm going to come down to Vibrance. And I'm just going to bump the Vibrance up quite a bit. 
and same with the saturation just to make the colors pop a little bit more so maybe not too much yep so hit ok on that and now if you wanted to adjust the colors you could do command u or control u if you're on pc which will bring up here in saturation and you can just drag this across and you'll see that it actually changes pretty much everything on here so if you wanted to have say more like this kind of paint color you could do that And from here now you can just really start to experiment so I'm just going to duplicate this again and turn that off just so we've always got a backup so it's non-destructive and we're going to call it to image adjustments and then color lockup and now I'm just going to literally just go through these and just click on pretty much all of them and see what kind of looks we can get I mean even off the first one there two strip look that looks quite cool so I'll keep that one in mind three strip this tends to make my colors a bit more vibrant and I think that looks a bit more like paint but yeah if you wanted to you could literally just go through them all and just see what kind of different looks you can get so I'm just gonna go with this one hit ok and now I'm going to add a background color so I'm gonna hit the background layer at the bottom press X to swap the foreground and background color and I'm gonna hold command and hit backspace or control backspace and that'll just put the background color on your, on your background color here as your actual background so actually I'm going to change that, it's a bit dark. So let's go with a blue colour. So sample a blue and then just bring it more to a sky blue sort of colour. And then command backspace. Um, not too sure about that colour. Let's try a yellowy orange sort of colour instead. So again, go sky colour. So I think that looks a bit better. It stands out a lot more. So one last thing that I'm going to show you that you can do, I mean there's plenty of things you can do in Photoshop to manipulate this, but I'm just going to show you some of the things that I actually do personally. So I'm just going to again duplicate this, turn off the background one, and I'm just going to come down to effects, and then I'm going to come to gradient overlay, or you can do color overlay, whichever one you want to click on. And now I've got this, and then where it says blend mode up here, you can see it's already set to hue because I've already been playing with this prior. But if you change these you can see what kind of different effects you can get with different gradient colors or different flat colors but as you can see I had it set to hue and it gives it this really weird sort of like he's put all this red on here and then what I figured out is if you again go to hue and saturation once you've done this if you actually change this it will adjust where the reds are the different uh, tones of red so you could play with that and let's just go with and for the background I'm now going to change this to a red color so maybe that's a little bit too bright so I want a bit more of like a sky color so a bit more of a pale pastel sort of color so uh, maybe a bit a bit closer to white okay I think that's a bit too white there we go so I'm quite happy with that and I think Think. I want these whites to pop a little bit more so I'm just going to come to adjustments levels I'm just going to knock this up a little bit so the whites really stand out and bring this down so the shadows are a bit darker and I'm pretty happy with that as you can see it does look like a sort of paintbrush like a 3d sort of paintbrush has created this ampersand it's quite a cool effect I mean you can add drips to this you can add shadowing around the bottom or if you've rendered it out with a studio within cinema 4d then you might already have quite a nice surrounding around it but yeah bring it into Photoshop gives you a lot more options like in terms of colors and just changing things so yeah that's pretty much it um, I hope this tutorial has helped you guys and of course if you've got any suggestions for any other videos uh, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and yeah thank you so much for watching guys I'll see you soon